The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise is back in a big way in 2024, with the next movie in the series, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, releasing in December. Thankfully, we don't have to wait until the end of the year to jump back into the Sonic universe, as the Knuckles spin-off TV miniseries, announced all the way back in 2022, and timeline-wise, takes place after the second movie and just before the third, had its first extended trailer released. It contains fun references to the Sonic games and has events that very well might affect the plot of Sonic 3, while also posing some major questions. Have we already gotten our first glimpse of Rouge the Bat? Is the villain we see in the trailer a character that's already appeared in the games? And what is the connection that puts Sonic and the Vince Vaughn movie Dodgeball in the same canonical universe? Let's do our best to answer those questions and take a look at the trailer for the Knuckles TV miniseries. The way we'll be examining this trailer is to go through scene by scene, stopping along the way to point out references and the action that's taking place, and at the end, I'll give my final thoughts as to what I think the overarching plot will be, how it will affect the third movie, and ultimately, how it looks overall. Now there won't be any spoiler warnings since this is all speculation, but I will be making references to events that do happen in the games, so if you don't want to be spoiled by the games that possibly spoil the third movie, then you may want to proceed with caution. With that out of the way, let's move on to the first scene. We start with Wade, the comic relief police officer from the first two Sonic movies, saying to Knuckles, you're an alien, you're super powerful, recently saved the world with your friends, what do you like to do for fun? To which Knuckles responds, vengeance. And Wade, driving with Knuckles, reacts by saying, I was thinking more like reading or yoga, eliciting a groan from the echidna. Under the voiceover, we get scenes from the second Sonic movie of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles defeating Robotnik, and Knuckles speeding past a signpost that says goal on one side, and when it spins, has a painted portrait of him on the other side. A creatively done reference to the 2D games when a stage would officially be completed by running through a sign that would switch from Robotnik's face on one side to a hero character's on the other. We get a hint as to what the show is about in the form of a broad synopsis from the trailer's written description. Quote, The new live-action series will follow Knuckles on a hilarious and action-packed journey of self-discovery as he agrees to train Wade as his protege and teach him the ways of the Echidna Warrior. This leads to my theory about the purpose of the sign. Since it says goal, I'm assuming it's going to be a finish line of sorts on a training course for Wade. If Knuckles is going to teach him the ways of the Echidna Warrior, there will definitely be some sort of over-the-top obstacle course involved. Next, Sonic and Knuckles are in Tom's attic, with Sonic mentioning how nice it is to relax, with the stewing Knuckles next to him stating, I am an Echidna Warrior. I only remain on Earth because I made a vow to you and the Fox. So, I made myself at home which translates into Knuckles delivering a mid-air punch to a mohawked rat-tailed goon, sending him through a bedroom wall. As for whose bedroom it is, it could be a random person's, but my guesses are it either belongs to Knuckles, who's living in Tom's house, or it's Wade's room. And that's more the way I'm leaning towards, based off some of the posters in the room. Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, Ren and Stimpy, Total Recall, The Addams Family, and a Ninja Turtles pillowcase. Something about all that screams Wade. We also get a glimpse of Knuckles beneath the tree eating a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos, which follows in the footsteps of the Olive Garden and Zillow product placement seen in the previous films. But more importantly, we see Knuckles in Tom's house standing on top of an altar, surrounded by a plethora of homemade weapons. It's pretty cool to see how much they'll be exploring Knuckles' culture, and hopefully, we'll get a bit more lore on the Echidnas, maybe about the war, and maybe some more insight as to who Longclaw really is. Maddie, from the first two movies, tells Knuckles they won't be turning their living room into a gladiator fighting pit, and we see Ozzy, the family dog, donning a Viking helmet, as Knuckles says Ozzy will be challenging his greatest enemy, which is revealed to be the mailman, 
terrified, and holding a baseball bat with nails sticking out of it. Any scene with Ozzy is always great, and they love to dress him up in these movies, probably because he's so adorable in everything he wears. But it's also great to see the return of core movie characters, which makes a statement that this isn't some haphazardly slapped together production to capitalize on the popularity of the films, it's actually being made with care and effort. Another voiceover takes place, this time from Knuckles. This is not a place of battle, so I will begin my quest. Come, Wade. To which Wade replies, most people think I'm a joke. And Knuckles responds, I do not make jokes. I make warriors. As he bends a bar for weights and throws it at Wade, pinning him down. It's good to see the series acknowledge Wade's established reputation as a less than stellar cop not suddenly turning him into a secret super soldier for justice. It's consistent from the movie to the television show, and that's one of the most important aspects of gaining credibility in a series. And thankfully, this looks to maintain that integrity. This also looks to be the jumping off point into the Knuckles side story. Assuming Maddie doesn't want him to continue his horseplay around the house, his need to create warriors and continue on the Echidna traditions is probably the driving force setting him out on this quest and selecting Wade as his pupil. Another great nod to the past is represented with Knuckles' hat being one and the same from the Sonic the Hedgehog OVA. And that hat looks even better in live action and hopefully will be available as merch at some point because that hat is too good not to be. The motorcycle though is an interesting touch. Reminding me of the scene in the Shadow the Hedgehog game when he rides one of his own could this motorcycle be commandeered by Shadow at some point in the third movie? It's possible. Next is the scene that provides the most mystery. We see our new villain, a bearded man with an apron of tools on his chest, who says, Knuckles. Without his little friends, he's vulnerable. He's the key to power my newest creation. And he says this to a pair of people in black clad suits, with the woman of the two saying, You worked for Robotnik. And he says, bring me Knuckles. We see the villain bringing out vials of Knuckles' spines in the same way Robotnik did with Sonic, and there's a ton of speculation abound here, with this short scene providing the conflict, capturing Knuckles to power new robots, and most exciting are questions about the show's bad guys. Starting with the villain, it's a bit hard to pin down who exactly he is, since there's not that many canon human villains in the Sonic games, which is primarily the source material the movies seem to go by. So if I had to guess just based off that, my reasoning would say he's either Eggman Nega, who first appeared in the game Sonic Rush, being a distant descendant of Eggman from the far future, which would make sense given he does have more of a round resemblance to the Robotnik of the original 2D games, with his beard reminding me of his mistaken appearance of the beard-wearing Robotnik on the US game cover of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which would be quite the pull, but would also mean that he would have to come from the future to do this. My other guess is that it could possibly be Gerald Robotnik, Robotnik's grandfather who in Sonic Adventure 2 created Shadow and also created the Ultimate Life Form. In that game, Gerald Robotnik dies creating the Ultimate Life Form, so if this person were to be Gerald, it would mean he's still alive. And when the woman mentions that he worked for Robotnik, maybe he'll comment he is Robotnik, or something to that effect since technically he is a Robotnik. Considering he seemingly knows how to reconfigure Eggman's robots, that would be my most educated guess as to who he is if he is a canon Sonic human character from the games. If he is a totally original character, my guess is he'll have the essence of some other villain from the Sonic series, but in human form, and possibly with the Sonic character's name. So maybe he'll be somebody completely new, but he'll go by the name Mephilus. It's not wholly unlikely since it's a character we haven't seen before, so it'll be exciting to see who the human turns out to be. The other two new characters, the man and woman dressed in suits, don't give us much information about themselves, except that they agree to catch Knuckles for the Mystery Man. But it does pose a question, and this may be a leap, but this is all speculation anyway. Wearing suits leads me to believe they may be some sort of government agents. It's a stereotype, but let's go down this path for the sake of argument. 
If this woman is to be a previously mentioned Sonic character, I would have to say there's a strong possibility of it being Rouge the Bat as a human. Granted, there's nothing to indicate this, but being introduced to the Knuckles spin-off series would make total sense as the place to introduce her if she were to make an appearance in the third movie. If she is in the third movie, I would bet it would be as her actual animal incarnation, but this wouldn't be a total shock if they decided to go the human route with her. The next shot we see the other agent, as I'll call them, in what looks to be Agent Stone's Mean Bean Coffee House, which further leads me to believe Robotnik and Stone are out of the picture entirely for this series. And if that's so, it would mean somebody knows about and has access to Robotnik's laboratory, which would make total sense for the villain who worked for Robotnik as previously mentioned. Notably, this is the first we see of the new weapon an agent wears, which, like Robotnik's ship in the first movie, is powered by the red vial containing Knuckles' needle. The agents come out of a ring portal armored in needle-powered gear in a bowling alley, which tells me either one of three furry heroes lost their rings, or the villain has access to rings of his own. And if it's the latter, that has much bigger implications and may tell us where he's from. Knuckles does a spin dash towards the two, rhetorically asking if they think they can take his power as him and the agent's fists collide. And the agent replies, Do I look like I need your power? A cute reference to what Knuckles says to Sonic when they first meet. And the female agent says, Getting his power is the whole reason we're here. So it's a kidnapping plot from the bad guy's side. We see a tentacle-laden mech robot with the villain inside, and he's beginning to look an awful lot like classic Robotnik, and looking more and more like the Sonic 2 US box art every time I see him. He looks to be trying to extract Knuckles' power through the machine, followed by a man throwing poker chips into the air, making me wonder if we'll be seeing Knuckles in Casino Night Zone, which may not be as far off as you think, evidenced by a small detail we'll soon see. We see Knuckles gliding down a cliff with Wade, a great nod to Knuckles' in-game ability to do so. And then we see one of Knuckles' tribes members named Pekakamak working in a bowling alley. Is this more than a reference of his tribe mentioned in the first two movies? Perhaps more of his kind have come through. And maybe we'll even get a sighting or reference to Tikal, one of the only other game canon echidnas, and an underrated and severely underutilized character in my opinion. The next few shots give us great insight as to where this movie can go. As we see a bowling trophy with a sign behind it that says, All lanes lead to Reno. And a live broadcast with announcers commentating for ESPN's The Ocho. Which is mind boggling. Because if you remember, The Ocho was the same station that broadcast in the Vince Vaughn movie Dodgeball. Which would mean Sonic the Hedgehog and Dodgeball exist in the same universe. If there's one thing I didn't intend to be confirmed in the Knuckles trailer, it's that Chuck Norris is canon to Sonic. Back to the plot though. Behind the Ocho announcers, we see a graphic that says Bowling Tournament of Champions, which should bring your mind back to the earlier scene where Wade and Knuckles were at the bowling alley, leading to my hypothesis as to what the plot could very well be and is as follows. Knuckles, not used to the slow pace of a peaceful life, decides to take Wade on as his apprentice in order to make him into a formidable warrior through teaching him the Echidna ways. At some point, Wade will reveal that although he is a goofball, he's a master amateur bowler and will be invited to compete in Reno, where the two will take a road trip much like Sonic and Tom in the first movie. During this time, the mystery villain will enlist the help of the agents to capture Knuckles in order to use his strength to power the new machines. At the end of the trailer, Wade is tied with a rope by a biker and dragged off into the distance, with Knuckles telling a woman that he must learn to rescue himself. It makes me wonder if at this point, Knuckles hasn't moved in with Wade. A few final thoughts on the trailer itself and what it shows. First, Knuckles looks really good. With the Sonic Trio, There visibly isn't as much detail, which makes sense. In this trailer, they do look a little smoother, but it's understandable on a television budget, so the fact that it looks near spot on 
is extremely impressive. Overall, Knuckles looks to be another fun outing in the Sonic universe, and looks to, at the very least, be a bridge between the second and third movies. If it ends up getting the viewership and ratings Paramount is undoubtedly looking for, maybe it'll be the first in a series of Sonic spin-offs. A Big the Cat series, anyone? We shall see.